Hi, and welcome to Mark's Bookmark Books. My name is Mark, and this is a review of To Like the Lightning by Ada Palmer. The book is set in the 25th century, when the world has basically turned into a utopia, with no wars for the last hundreds of years. It's the first in a series, and it's, it's possible that the series describes the last days of this utopia, but there's other hints, like the book's title page, which might contradict that. The story starts with the theft of a 710 list, which is sort of the future equivalent of the Forbes uh, 100 Most Powerful People list. It's found in the Sanir Weeks booth bash, and a bash is sort of the future equivalent of a voluntary extended family unit. And this bash is in charge of all the car traffic in the world which is automated and which is super fast so it only takes like a few minutes to get from one side of the world to the other and that's one of the most important technologies in the future because that has really shrunk down the world uh, so that the concept of nations has been replaced by hives which are kind of non-geographical uh, nations and the investigation into the theft of this list brings into conflict the, the seven big hives and there's all kinds of political maneuvering which uh, happens as a consequence. On top of that we're introduced to Bridger, a 13 year old kid who has the miraculous gift of being able to animate inanimate objects, like for instance uh, his toy soldiers. This this is never really explained, it's, it's presented as a miracle, it might be explained further on in the books, but Bridger is protected by uh, Mycroft, who is a servicer, and servicer are criminals who are sentenced to a lifelong life of service where they have to basically obey everybody and they have no possessions and they only get to eat when people give them food. It's a, it's a very... It's, it's, it's slavery basically. The novel has a very distinct structure where it's it's almost like a roller coaster where in the first half of the book um, Ada Palmer builds up and builds up all the world building, all the characters and then once you hit the midway point, there is reveal after reveal after twist. Everything gets turned around. It's, it's dizzying almost the, the number of twists uh, that, that she lays on you. If you would start this novel and find the beginning too slow or too l laborious, definitely stick around until that point. It's the point where you find out Mycroft's crime, which really kicks things off. And it really changes the reading experience from, from that point on. Another interesting aspect is that um, Mycroft continually breaks the fourth wall and goes into actual discussions with uh, his readership uh, who argue with him about the choices he's making in telling the story. And in these interactions, there is a lot of, of foreshadowing. The book is full, full, full of foreshadow and, and a lot of it doesn't pay off in this book. A lot of it is for things still yet to come. There's some really interesting ideas that Ada Palmer explores in this book. Uh, the first one is how she handles gender. In this uh, future, gender has become sort of taboo. It's uh, completely unacceptable to address people by gendered pronouns and it's, it's considered very, very gauche to dress in clothing which su suggests uh, your gender. But Mycroft, as he's telling the story, he's, he has opted to tell it as a 18th century novel and thus he is gendering everybody. But the way he's gendering people is not unnecessarily by their biological sex, it's by their attributes or by their function in the story or their function in, in society. 
So in a way, it's a very gender fluid approach in the way he assigns gender to people. But then once you, you look into how he assigns gender, you get a very, very gender essentialist uh, view of the world. Like all females are soft, are nurturing, all males are competitive, aggressive. It's, it's almost worse than, than it is today. Another interesting aspect is religion. In the future, uh, in this story, religion isn't uh, outlawed or anything, but organized religion is. Three or more people in this world are not allowed to discuss theology, because that could lead to sects and so on. The last wars in, in the history of this world were the church wars, and after those, uh, the organized religion has become completely completely unacceptable. But as an alternative, there are now sensayers. These are people who wander around. There are sort of a combination of psychologists, um, therapists and priests who discuss uh, matters of faith and making sense of the world with people and try to lead people to their own uh, theology or their own uh, sense of how, how the world works. So these are all very interesting ideas, but once you start to explore them closer in the novel, you find out that actually they're all based on repression. This is not a society which has outgrown gender, which is probably also not something you would want to have happen, but it's one that has very strictly repressed it. And the consequence of that is that there's a lot of bad attitudes, bad ideas festering underneath. Same thing with religion. It's not that this world has outgrown religion or that organized religion has matured into a peaceful uh, configuration. No, it's just that uh, it's all very, very strictly regulated. Even if you look into the old um, nation hive thing, and uh, one of the things that's peculiar in the book is that Minecraft always explicitly states which language people are speaking and they speak different languages and it's very important to them which language they speak. So there again you see that under the surface there is still this nationalism, this, this, this geographic nation ID which is still very strong. And all this repression is almost inevitably gonna lead to a revolution of course and that's hinted at several times in the book. So that's all very fascinating, but ah, still I didn't really uh, connect to this novel, I didn't really like it, for several reasons. First is, none of the characters are really very interesting. I'm, I'm not just talking sympathetic, I can live in a novel without sympathetic characters, Obvi often that's very interesting, but these aren't even interesting, they're not re really compelling. And that also undoes a lot of the twists and turns at the end, because, well, I mean, if this character that wasn't interesting is actually another kind of character which also isn't interesting mm, doesn't really really grab you that much another thing is the world building which usually isn't that important to me actually in, in, in speculative fiction but here it really rubs me the wrong way in that it seems so so very thin it's as if there is no world outside of the bubble of characters which are described in the book which are almost all sort of the future equivalent of aristocrats and, and their servants. It seems that there is no world outside that bubble. I, I have no idea what kind of economy for instance this world is running under. It seems if you would just look away from the action you would just find a blank canvas. This is kind of annoying because it seems one of the ideas that Ada Palmer is trying to explore is a return to the old idea of history as made by a few great men or women instead of the result of global forces and population shifts. And this book really seems on, to be on the side of history as made by great men and women. Um, but that's but the problem is that all the politics in the book, the capital P politics, people trying to govern, is very, very unconvincing because of this lack of world building. And also because of this, you don't really appreciate any global forces or population shifts. 
they, they, they're mentioned, but they are very, very weak, very, very unconvincing in, in, in the book. Now, I don't actually know if that's the point that Ada Palmer is actually trying to make in the whole series. It might, uh, it might shift in, in, in later books. And that's also one of the problems with this book, in that it isn't a complete book. It's half a book. It just stops midway through the story. And I have problems trying to, to make my mind up about the story, because I really feel like I'm trying to judge a very incomplete uh, story. So yeah, there was, there was quite a lot of things I didn't really like about this novel, but on the other hand, I... I didn't dislike it either, to be fair. It, the writing is very good. It's very gripping, as, especially in the second half. There are some interesting links to, to old uh, philosophers like Voltaire and, and the Marquise de Sade. So I'll, I'll definitely be checking out the, the next book in, in the series. And I hope to get a better appreciation of, of the whole story once, once I've read that book. If you uh, want to discuss this book, and I'm really, really eager to do this, I know a lot of people really like this book, so I'm, I'm, I'm very open to, to discussing this, uh, feel free to leave a comment below also if you have questions. And if you like this video and want to see more, uh, please hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.